Hi there, Mitchell Sigmund back again for Acoustica Zeros and Ones blog. Today will be the final installment in our Nightlight BST Cool Features blog series. We're going to talk about the modulation sequencers, or mod sequencers for short. And these are uh, five different uh, modulation sources that do cool stuff to sounds. There is a step LFO, there is a filter sequencer, there is an arpeggiator, there is a pitch sequencer, and there is an amplitude gate sequencer or amp gate sequencer. And like I said, these are all suited for different types of modulations, although they're all kind of good for pulsy kind of steppy stuff, but you can also smooth out the steps. But instead of me yakking about them, let us go to the magical world of screen capture and I will show you all of them. To use the mod sequencers, the first thing we're gonna do is click on the sequencer tab over here. And down here you can see all five of the mod sequencers I talked about in the intro. You can also see that there's a little rectangle around this one and that tells you which one you're currently working with. So if you just click on them, the little rectangle highlights it. And the little green LED here tells you which one is on. So you can turn them on and off by clicking on them. But note that you can turn them on and off without actually highlighting the particular sequencer. So in other words, I can be working with the step LFO here, the little rectangle is highlighting it, but I can turn the other ones on and off here. So let's talk about the step LFO over here first. Now one thing you'll need to understand about the step LFO as opposed to the other four mod sequencers here is that the step LFO, like the regular LFOs, needs to be routed using the matrix routing window here. So in other words, even if we turn up the controls of the step LFO over here, it's not going to have any audible effects until we route it up here. Now the good thing is this is pretty easy to do. So over here we have the mod source and here we can select step LFO. And over here we have the destination. And I'm gonna make this uh, filter cutoff one because that's easy to hear. And over here we have the modulation amount setting which can be anywhere from zero to 200. And as you can see the nominal setting for this is 100. So let's start with something really simple. I'm just gonna do a kind of pulsing on and off thing here. Let's take these down and make it a little more interesting. And I've set up a beat over here just for reference for timing, and you can hear this locks to the master clock. And I can add steps if I want. Let's make that an even number. And the smooth knob over here will smooth out the steps. So essentially what you're doing here, and this is important to understand, is by smoothing out these steps, you can essentially make your own custom waveforms. Let's move on to the filter sequencer. Now the filter sequencer works very similarly to the step LFO we just talked about, but there are a couple of small differences. The big difference is that the filter sequencer doesn't necessitate the use of the modulation routing matrix. Remember we set up the source of modulation and the destination and the depth and all that stuff? Well, you don't have to do any of that if you're using the filter sequencer, because the filter sequencer is hardwired to the filters. That means I can just choose the filter sequencer over here and start drawing modulation, and it goes right to the filter. Now the advantage of using the step LFO is because you're using that modulation matrix, you can route that step LFO to all sorts of different things, pitch, phase, FM, so forth. So it's a little more flexible, but if you just want to modulate the filter, then the filter sequencer is great. And also it works completely independently of the step LFO, so you can modulate two different things independently. Like the step LFO, the filter sequencer also has a smooth knob, so you can take these, so you can take these discrete steps and smooth them out to make your own waveforms. Next up we have the arpeggiator, but it's not an arpeggiator in the traditional sense where you play a three note chord and the notes are played back in sequence. Uh, instead you can just hold down one note and you can draw in a sequence. And again this locks to master clock. And the notes are drawn in, each one of these representing a half step.
and you can go up and down an octave either direction from the note you're pressing. These say C0, C+, C-1, but really, in truth, it depends what note you're holding down on the keyboard. Moving along to the pitch sequencer, this is actually very similar to the arpeggiator, but the controls are slightly different. With the arpeggiator, you can actually set it to go down or up from the key that you're playing on the keyboard. Whereas with the pitch sequencer, it works strictly from zero to maximum up here. So you want to draw the lines in from the bottom over here. Now, the other thing about it that's interesting is there's a range control over here. So if it's on zero, it's not going to do anything. So what we want to do is set this to, say, plus one, and now our range is an octave. And if we set it to plus two, now we have two octaves of range. Or if we turn it this way, it goes down. So this is a little confusing with the minus one and minus two settings. As it goes up, it's actually making the pitch go lower. Here I've set up a familiar uh, prog rock chestnut, if you will, using the pitch sequencer. Finally, we have the amplitude gate sequencer. And this works a lot like the filter sequencer, except that it, instead of working on the filter setting, it actually affects volume. So you can do some interesting things with this. In its most basic form, you can just draw a line like that. And it fades the volume up in steps. If I skip steps, get more of a pulsing thing. And there's a bunch of interesting stuff you can do with this too. You can do the same kind of create your own modulation waveform idea where you use the smoothing control. And again, this all locks to the beat. Here I've made a pretty fun patch where I use the amplitude gate sequencer combined with uh, synced delay. Alright, so that wraps up our Nightlife Mod Sequencer Fun Madness. Uh, if you'd like to check out some of the patches I made using the Mod Sequencers, there's a link in the blog below. It's really hard to point like this when you turn around backwards. And check those out, download them, and have a listen and fool with them. And enjoy yourself, have fun with Nightlife.